States. I was, I was in a uh, political cult for about ten and a half years, and uh, initially I thought I had really found something. I thought I, you know, finally had a group of people that would give me uh, purpose and meaning, and it was just the most wonderful feeling in the world, although I was, even from the beginning, sort of cautious and skeptical and wondering, well, really, what is this? But as time went on, uh, the group became more and more restrictive and, and more and more controlling of my daily life. And um, I would say, when I think about it, I mean, the, the thinking back now from that group, uh, I think the main thought that comes to mind is anxiety, confusion, and fear. Those were the main feelings that I had during most of those years. I, for a lot of that time, was in leadership positions and um, had to carry out acts that now I find reprehensible, and um, it was a very, very stressful time. Do you feel comfortable telling us about any of those acts? Well, sure. <laughs> I don't, uh, in fact, you know, one of the ways I think it's important for people who leave these groups is to really look back and evaluate what they did and why they did it and um, how people got to do things they wouldn't ordinarily do. Um, our group was very abusive in the sense of having um, constant uh, criticism sessions where we sat in a circle and somebody got blasted and uh, I was one of the most harsh of the enforcers of that regime. I also expelled many people, I separated uh, couples, I convinced people not to have babies, I convinced people not to go home for their parents funerals, uh, not to get married to a particular person. Um, I stood guard over people who were under house arrest for weeks at a time. Um, I was part of a special elite team called the Eagles uh, who served as a bodyguard for the leader and who we were often sent out to intimidate other groups mm -hmm. um, or former members of our own group. Uh, so those were the kinds of things we did which, which weren't very pleasant. Steve, were your experiences as a Mooney, and I know that was many, many years ago at this point, similar? Um, in many, many ways, yes. Uh, I was recruited when I was 19, back in 1974, while a college student, and I basically, within a few weeks, after going to a three-day intensive indoctrination workshop, came to believe that Moon was the Messiah, and that the world was coming to an end, that World War III was going to happen in 1977, and I was quickly promoted to a leadership position where I, too, separated people, uh, interfered with letters and phone calls from families, was involved with fraudulent fundraising practices in the Moonies and doing front group political demonstrations for the Moonies. I was involved for about two and a half years, and fortunately I had a near fatal car crash, which led to my parents intervening, and then I've spent the last 23 years as a mental health counselor helping other families and, and people recover from mind control. Tell us a little bit about how you did get out of the Moonies, what it was like. Did you undergo psychological stress when you were contemplating leaving? I wasn't contemplating leaving at all. I was mm. a fanatic. And uh, you cited Jim Jones, you cited David Koresh and, and uh, uh, Herf Applewhite, the leader of Heaven's Gate, and I can tell you that it's cut from the same mold of uh, this kind of total dicta dictatorial authoritarian figure and as a member you're told to emulate that figure and uh, you're told to suppress your own thoughts, your own feelings are evil so members are taught mind control techniques, phobias are implanted in members minds to give them irrational fears that if anything, if they ever leave or even question the group terrible things will happen to them and so for me uh, I was in a near-fatal car crash, I, three days up, no sleep at all, uh, so I almost died. I was in the hospital, needed an operation. My family found out surreptitiously where I was, and it led to a five-day intensive intervention so they with sent former somebody members. In. Well, I was lured home to my sister, the only person in my family who was not critical of my involvement, mm -hmm. and they took my crutches away. I had a broken leg and a cast up to here, and they said, Steve, we want you to talk to these former members, and of course I said, Satan, get away from me. And so initially it was involuntary, but uh, within a day I basically uh, saw how much my family were, was concerned about me. I still didn't believe I was under mind control. I was convinced I was doing God's will. But my father started to break down in tears and said, Steve, what would you do if it was your son who dropped out of college, quit his job, donated his bank account, and went off with this controversial group? Wouldn't you want to make sure he heard the other side? 
Just talk to them for a few days, and if you decide you want to go back, I'll drive you back, but at least I'll be able to sleep at night as your parent. And because I knew he loved me, and I loved him, and I was absolutely convinced I agreed to meet with the ex-members, and I was taught what mind control was, and came to the realization that, in fact, I had been the victim of a very systematic social influence program that systematically stripped away my ability to think for myself, and that in mental health terms, created a dissociative disorder in me. It literally split me into a pseudo-identity, a, a cult identity, that was following Moon as my parent, as opposed to the real Steve Hassan. And it was that new identity that was prepared to kill on command or, or, or kill myself on command. It was that level of total dedication. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.